Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci and special guest Steve Sibley here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call 267-988-2000. You're probably wondering, who is addicted to real estate? Well, we're full-time real estate investors that play Monopoly for a living. We buy houses, so if you have a house you're looking to sell, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about it. If you're a real estate agent and you've always wanted to be a real estate investor, Addicted to Real Estate Agency is the, is the investor-friendly agency for you. We have three offices, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. And we specialize in bridging the gap between real estate investors and realtors. We also do investor education meetings every month. You can check us out by putting your name and email address in at addictedtorealestate.com with the number 2, addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address in there, and I'm going to send you an invitation to our next meeting. So, how you guys doing today? How you doing, Phil? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Steve, what's going on, man? Not a whole lot, man. Just, you know, trying to get a nice start to the week, get some motivation behind me, and, and you know... Try to make some investment deals. I just want to give kudos to Steve. He, uh, he he really did a great job helping us get the new Addicted to Real Estate website up. We have uh, A2RE.com is now fully searchable for properties. You can you can go in there and check out all the agents that are hanging out a license with us. You can hang your license with us. A2RE.com is our website. And, Steve, I just want to thank you for all your work on getting that website up and running. Absolutely. No problem. Yo, Brett, what's going on with you, man? Just enjoying the end of the weekend. How about you guys? Man, that mic sounds great. He's got the Shure mic. Man. Yeah, he's got the expensive. Brett's our See producer. That? Actually, and, uh, you guys got the better mics. These mics are like uh, first grade type mics. You guys got like the high class mics, especially se- for your show, guys. We got second grade, huh? No, you guys got yeah, like. He's got the Beats headphones. We got the yeah. Radio Shack. <laughs> I'll let you borrow mine one day. <laughs> We like to pick on Brett every once in a while. Uh, he's our favorite guy down here, and you know I'm Sicilian, so the way that the way that Sicilians show affection is we abuse people verbally. Let's not let's not talk about pizza, Phil. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are our questions for this week? So questions for this week. What are the secrets of real estate investing? So somebody wants us to share our secrets with them. I can't tell anybody. That's why they're secrets. Yeah, they won't become secret anymore, right? And uh, why is it that everything our parents told us is good is actually bad? We uh, we were having a little talk about that on the way down to the show today. Is that why the things that we were always taught was good end up being bad? Not only just with our parents, but outside of that as well. And is it true that nine out of ten millionaires made most of their money in real estate? Hmm. So that's the third question. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research before we get up to the question. You know what they say though: sixty-seven percent of all statistics are made up. <laughs> Actually, nice. I think it's 67.2. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, in the main segment, the what is the worst way to invest in real estate? Yeah, that's uh, that's something a lot of people need to know about because I bet you that the most way that people invest is the worst way. Sure. And later on, how to play Monopoly in real life. I we're going to play Monopoly? Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty boring to play Monopoly on a radio show. But I don't know, man. I could commentate. It could get pretty exciting. Hey, what if do, we play for real money? That'll be fun. And play by play, right? <laughs> All right. So uh, these are the topics we're going to be talking about. Stick around as we discuss the questions of the day first. We'll see you in two minutes. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. 
When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We're going to get into the questions right away. So, here's our first question for Addicted to Real Estate's resident genius, Jeremy Ricci. What are the secrets to real estate investing? How many secrets do you want me to cover? Cover the most important ones. I think two ought to be sufficient. Okay. I don't want to give them all away. I mean... I think the number one secret for real estate investing is that this is not a business of bricks and sticks, and it's not about the houses. It's more about the financing. So it's a financing business. It's important to understand that the time value of money is one secret. Understanding what a dollar today is not worth a dollar 10 years from now. And if you understand how to work a financial calculator, if you understand how to buy houses that your tenants can afford, as you often hear us say, then then you'll do great in this business. We, one of the ways that you can 
just structuring deals in a way that's a win-win for sellers when you're buying real estate is another thing that I, I highly encourage people do instead of just coming out with low ball cash offers. There's, there's always a place for that, but a lot of times there's better solutions to, to people's problems that you really can help other people instead of being combative in your negotiation process, develop win-win strategies. And uh, I think that's one of the things that, that we do that's very different than most you know, fix and flip people or whatever. We're, we, we, when you only can negotiate price, it's always offer, counter, offer, offer, counter, offer. But when you can negotiate terms, like with owner financing, you can take over mortgages and some of the other creative strategies that we use, raising private money, you're, you're really having, having multiple tools on your tool belt makes, a, makes for a better real estate investor, I would say. Well said. Any other secrets? What secrets have you learned so far, Steve? No, I think that you, know, you you made a, a good comment there, and it's it's working to not just you know make a lowball offer, but really understanding their needs, what they actually need out of the house, and and putting that together uh, with your tool belt full of financing options, it allows you to approach that deal from multiple situations and, and multiple angles to hopefully come to a an arrangement where you and uh, the seller are, are both walking away with a win win. So yeah, I mean that, that's the one of the biggest things I've, I've taken away from just. Uh, hanging around with you guys is that you know low ball cash offer um, is never is never as as powerful as some terms that you can generate um, you know to really knock down a win win. Yeah, Phil and I went to go look at an estate uh, sale just uh, over the over this past week, and the uh, the nice thing was there's two heirs involved in an estate, and you know the neat thing was you have two opportunities to negotiate price or terms. So I had proposed to them, you know they decided they just wanted all cash, but if there's two heirs in an estate, you know, you could have an individual negotiation with each, with each one of those. Maybe one of the siblings wants uh, all cash and the other sibling w- would be open to taking payments over time. So you can structure deals when there's multiple people involved separately. The same is true. I've had people where there was a divorce situation and they were already divorced. So essentially each of them, instead of, instead of while they're married, they both own 100% of the house. Each of them owned 50% of the house. So you could always buy 50% from one person and buy 50% from the other person and structure each part of that house separately. A lot of times they, you know, it's a good it's it's a good thing for your negotiation. They say, I just want to make sure that he doesn't get anything out of this. And then he says, I want to make sure she doesn't get anything out of this deal. So I said, okay, well, I can accommodate both of you. Don't worry. <laughs> no. No, but it's, it's really about the, the secret is making – You'll get more deals closed if you take the time to understand somebody else's needs. And they might be monetary, but they might be needs that are outside of just dollars and cents. And if you can make deals that make sense, they'll they'll probably also make dollars. Boy, that's a good one. That was good. Yeah. Gotta, you know. I'm going to write that one down. That could be the topic of a video or a meeting. So what's our next question? Why is it that everything our parents told us that we thought was good is actually bad? Hmm. Well, let me let me. Tack- I don't know if that's everything, but what are some things, Phil? Let me tackle that. I could think of one thing that comes to mind, and that's the sun. You know, you're you're told uh, you're told that the sun is bad for you, and and that you need to cover your body with sunblock because the sun is going to give you skin cancer. And I just don't buy that. I don't believe that Mother Nature or God or whatever it is that you believe in. I trust Mother Nature. I trust the Creator. I trust God, that they, God doesn't make mistakes. So when you tell me that there's something dangerous for humans with the sun, I don't believe it. Okay? And really, what, what do you get when you're in the sun, right? You get vitamin D, okay? And your skin changes color just as, a, as an effect to show your healthiness. That's why you look better, because... Naturally, you're healthier because you've, you've now gotten exposure and your vitamin D levels have gone up. And when people bake this man-made chemical into their skin, which, by the way, if you don't know, anything that you wipe on your skin goes immediately into your bloodstream. So if you were to put something on your skin, before you put it on your skin, ask yourself if you would eat it. Would you eat what you're about to put on your skin? Because essentially it goes into your body. Well, I put clothing on my skin every day, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't eat that. All right, so the point to it is 
Maybe what gives people skin cancer is the chemicals in the sunblock, which then gets baked into your skin with the sun. Maybe it's not the sun that's bad for you. How about milk? That's another thing that I, comes I think, to I think that the sun thing, you're just saying, you're just trying to impress on your tenants that you don't want them to stay inside in your real estate to put wear and tear on it. You want them to get outside as much as possible so they're not... Uh, well, if they're healthier, then they'll be able to pay the rent for longer. They'll stay alive longer to pay the rent, right? Hey, milk's another one. Like, we're told when we were kids that milk is, is good for you, right? I mean, do you know that man is the only creature on earth that drinks the milk of another animal? That is interesting. It I is. imagine a cow would drink milk of another animal if you fed it to them. But they're gonna make, not going to make a conscious decision to do that. Well... I mean, <laughs> I bet I bet you there's some YouTube videos of dogs and cows. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to look that up. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, uh, Steve brought up another thing that uh, that he was thinking of in the car. Uh, what were you thinking of, Steve? Oh, uh, my my major thing was, um, you know, just the way that we're thought to think about money and how, you know, oftentimes it's it's you're not supposed to talk about money. And, you know, the way that you generate and, and hoard it away for retirement one day, you know, that's the only way to do it. Um, you know, I didn't have any sort of formal education on financial intelligence or, um, you know, anything that really helped me understand how money and debt truly work. Um, so, you know, maybe reading a book or just exposing yourself to some people that um, are wealthy and got that way because they're making decisions that are a little different than your father might have. Um, you know, that'll put you in a better position to really understand how to structure these real estate deals, um, you know, using a, a more, you know, a less formal financial education, but more realistic approach to understanding how money works. This leads me into something that, Phil, you often talk about, which is self-education versus formal education. Right. I mean, what, do you, what do you mean when you say that? Okay, let's, let's use my son as an example. He has three months left in high school, and he's coming to work with us, Okay. Now, let's just suppose that he wants to go to college, which is what every single person that he's been exposed to, or almost every single person he's been exposed to in his schooling environment, all they tell him is college, 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 college. Everything is directed towards going to college, which essentially teaches you how to become an employee. Of course, I don't know where my son got this idea from, but he seems to think that he could be a real estate investor. I have no idea where he got that idea from. How radical. Okay. Yeah. Let's just suppose... That instead of going to college and spending, say, $25,000 a year, he came and worked for me for free for a whole year. For a whole year, he worked for free. He, his practical knowledge, being with people who l work in the industry that he's chosen to do every single day, will accelerate him on a path faster than anything else I could possibly imagine. There's no way that someone in school, no matter what it is that they're teaching you, what do they do for a living? They teach. Who, what are they teaching you? They're teaching you from a book. Who wrote that book? Probably people who just write textbooks for a living. They probably don't even do what it is that they're writing about. The best way to learn anything, in my mind, is to go hang around with the people who do it every day. Your, the acceleration of your knowledge will be second to none. And even if you do it for free, you're saving 100% of the cost of college. But my son, is he going to be doing it for free? Heck no. If he finds a deal and we end up funding his deal, don't you think we're going to pay him for that? Of course we are. We want to incentivize him to go out and find 20 more of them. So he's going to most likely make a living doing what he's decided he wants to do. And he's going to do it immediately. And if you, I, I, I'm dying to see what happens with this experiment. How old, how old is Stone? Now? Is he 17 or 18? He's 18. 18. So when he graduates high school, he'll be 18. And and I'm predicting he'll be a millionaire by 25. We're going to send him to get his real estate license. I figure when the time's right, we will. When the time's right. The point to all of this is, even if you're, you know, figure out what it is that you want to do in life, whatever that is. And, and go ask to work for somebody for free or work for them for minimum wage and be happy to do it and learn that business. I think it will get you set on a path that will get you to where your end goal is faster than any other way. Now think about apprenticeships 
back back in the day, you know, when you were the uh, the butcher, the baker, the blacksmith, or whatever, what did people do? They went and they apprenticed under a master tradesman, and they became yeah, I mean proficient read, in whatever it was itself. Ben Franklin. Read you know, Ben right, Franklin, right, for right, example. Exactly. What happened with Ben Franklin? Okay, his father, when he was like twelve years old, told him to go work for his older brother, who happened to be a printer. A printer, yeah. He actually did have another brother who made candles. And he did work for him for like a year, and he knew that that wasn't intellectually stimulating enough for him. And when he got into the printing business, um, you know, his older brother tried to suppress him, actually beat him. How'd you like that? Okay. His beat old, him, like his, physically. Physically. His older brother used to beat him when he didn't perform properly. Jeez. And uh, then his older brother wouldn't let him be a writer either. So, fascinating story if you haven't read the autobi- autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. It's... It's a little difficult to read because it's written in the language of the English language as it was spoken 250 years ago. They have an interpreted version, though. They actually they have do. a version that's like a modern English version. I know they do, yeah. but I always felt the need to read it, the words right from him. Sure. So what do we got on our third question? Is it true that 9 out of 10 millionaires make most of their money in real estate? Well, I don't, I don't know that 9 out of 10 make their money in real estate, but surely 9 out of 10 millionaires own Real estate, I would say that that's investment property, not their, not just their primary residence. Actually, the author of this question said made most of their money. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I didn't do any research for this question. It certainly feels like it to me when I meet wealthy people that the bulk of the wealthy people that I know seem to all be involved in real estate in one capacity or another, whether it's note investing or the mortgage business or – owners of real estate or sellers and buyers and sellers of real estate, like real estate agents, seems to me like most of the successful people I know have some uh, portion of their portfolio in real estate. Well, you said portfolio, and and one of the things that I uh, attributed, I I quit my job after reading the book, Rich Dad, um, that wasn't Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it was Robert Kiyosaki's other book, it was called Cash Flow Quadrant, and one of the things he talks about in Cash Flow Quadrant, it was the difference between using your time to make you money and buying assets and having those assets or building assets. Um, the two examples would be case of a business. You, you own a business. The business gives you passive income. You have other people running it. It gives you passive income, and that passive income uh, gives you, you know, freedom. And the same thing with real estate being an asset. The asset rolls off passive income, and that gives you some freedom. So it's not just – you know, your dollars, your your hours make you dollars. It's your assets make you dollars. So whether it's real estate or it's a business, I think both of those accomplish the same thing. Or a real estate business, even better yet. Combine them both. Well, Kiyosaki's written some amazing books, and I recommend that you read his books. And I know that he's actually coming to Philadelphia in the near future. If you're thinking about going to that seminar, I'd rather tell you privately what I think of that. Give me a call at 267-988-2000. I'll be happy to share with you. My experience as I've been to many of those seminars. He's not coming. He's not coming. His of course people he's are not coming. coming. He's course, not yeah. coming. Sure, sure. But who is coming are the people you better be worried about. <laughs> Feel free to give me a call and talk about it. If you want to learn about real estate investing, you don't need to go to Robert Kiyosaki's sales pitch. Oh, I mean seminar about real estate investing. What you want to do is learn from people in this area who do it for real. And Addicted to Real Estate is a great company to help you do that. Go to addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address in on our website. We will invite you to our local meetings. We, uh, we are the authors of books. We have uh, meetings constantly. We even have an apprenticeship program that you can call and talk to me about at 267-988-2000. So <clears throat> stick around. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's the worst way to invest in real estate. Let me tell you, this is going to be a really important topic because the worst way to invest in real estate is probably the way you are investing in real estate. And we want to help you to stop doing that and to learn a much better way. Okay, you're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. 
Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And on this segment, we're going to talk about the worst way to invest in real estate. That's right. You heard us, the worst way. Usually we talk about the best way, but today we're going to talk about how you can do it and uh, really limit yourself in your investing career. And, Phil, what would you say is is the way that most people do it? Well, what I think is the worst way is probably the way that most people do it, and that is the conventional method of purchasing real estate. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you you contact a real estate agent, you look for a property to buy, you contact a bank, you get pre-approved for a mortgage, you put down your 20% or whatever percentage is required, and you purchase a property through these channels. And why do I think that's the worst? Okay, look, I bought houses that way, so I'm not knocking anybody if that's the way you've started. Usually when you don't know a better way, that's the way that you use. I've done it myself. But I'm going to try to explain to you today why I think it's, it's the worst way, okay? The, the first reason would be that when, you're, when you contact a real estate agent, 
and you're looking for a piece of property that's on the multiple listing service, essentially that is a property that everybody knows about. So it tends to create a bidding war. And what it also does is it, by definition, means that you're paying a retail price for that piece of real estate. I wouldn't recommend that anybody pays retail for a piece of real estate unless you were obtaining some kind of financing that came with it that made it worth your while. And so that's why we teach people about financing all the time. We've already talked about that a little bit on today's show. right? The other problem that I have with the conventional method of buying real estate is is that when you go to a bank and you get pre-approved for a mortgage and you're going to put down your own money, I don't necessarily have a problem with you putting down your own money, but I love to buy houses with none of my own money. We are experts at buying houses with none of your own money, and if you want to learn how to do that, all you have to do is listen to this show. We, we share those ideas all the time. My new book that is I hate to even talk about because it's still not ready for sale, my publisher, if you're listening, I'd like to come down there and, and put a big nugget on the top of your coconut uh, for taking so long to finish my book, but oh, I'm getting off the deep end here, but we are experts at learning how to buy real estate with none of your own money. And when you learn how to do that, you are limited by nothing. Okay, And once you learn that, it's too complicated to get into right now, but once you learn that, that is something that you, it'll change your life. Okay, It'll change your life for real. The, The third thing about buying properties conventionally that bothers me and that I think is really the worst thing you can do when it comes to real estate investing is when you go to settlement to buy your house through the conventional means that you're paying retail price for, the mortgage company that's going to lend you this money is going to put in front of you a package of papers. And that package of papers, my friend, is going to require you to sign, 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 sign. And you're not going to have time to read it all. And one day you're going to look back over that paperwork and you're going to realize that you just signed away virtually anything that you own as collateral for the loan that you just got. And I don't recommend that anybody does that, okay? Unless you're about to buy the most amazing deal that's ever come across your plate in your entire life, you really shouldn't take that chance. If you ask any really experienced guru about would they sign personally for a loan, what I mean by that is that say that the amazing deal comes along and I want to buy this property, By signing those standard papers, I'm basically risking everything that I own up to this point in my life. And I've done quite well in this business. I'm not willing to risk everything I own for any deal. And that is what I'm trying to save people from doing. That's what I mean by the worst way to buy real estate. One of the things you mentioned about about putting 20% down and using on your own money, I mean, come on, Phil. You you have an endless supply of money, don't you? I mean, anybody... I don't care if you have a million dollars in the bank. If you're buying real estate with 20% down, you'll eventually run out of it. So that, I think that's why it's important to learn how to do it without your own money because at one day you will run out of money to do deals. And and uh, as you if, – if you're putting money down on properties, you know, I, th- I always tell sellers this too. Like even if I had a million dollars in the bank and I go buy $200,000 houses, after five houses I'm done. But if you use none of your own money, if you use private lenders, if you if you take over mortgages, things like we talk about, uh, seller financing, those kind of deals, you can do as many as you can find, and you're not limiting yourselves. One of the other things that's that's limiting for many people is that it's, it's I don't have the money to invest in real estate. A lot of times, their their belief system is really what the issue is in, in them getting started. I don't have the credit. Well, we talk about ways you can do it without your own credit. I don't have the money. We talk about ways to do it without your own money. So really, it's. It's really between uh, between your ears that's the limiting factor sometimes in, in people getting started. I remember when I started in the business, there was real estate agents showing me properties that said, you know, you're going to have to put this money down but and also expect that you're going to lose money for the first several years, but that's normal. That's normal, and then eventually it'll break even. Or, you know, starting out it'll break even. You know, I, I like to teach people how to make deals that are making money day one. In fact, we often get paid at the settlement. Because we need to feed our family, so we get paid at the settlement table to buy the properties and keep the properties, and they should cash flow. And when I say cash flow, I mean in a positive way, not negative cash flow. 
So all properties cash flow. It's just a matter of what direction, right? So we right. need to buy properties that cash flow right out the gate. I like to make a couple hundred dollars a month at least on each each door, each single family house, or if it's a duplex, maybe four hundred dollars a month would be a good number. Well, you know, it, it it might even sound a little odd to people when addicted to real estate. We're owners of of a real estate agency. We own a real estate agency. We are real estate agents. And we obviously uh, are a consulting company for people who are looking to buy real estate investments. So obviously there's still ways that you can do real estate deals like that. I'm I'm not knocking people who work with realtors. I'm not knocking real estate agents. I'm not. I'm merely saying that there's a whole nother way to buy real estate that is so much better that you you really need to learn that if you're going to be a serious real estate investor. And that knowledge, it is so powerful. Just try to imagine if you're limited by nothing, meaning that I could have uh, $2,000 in the bank and yet I can be going out and looking at a piece of real estate worth uh, $1.5 million. And if you don't think that I've done that in my life, you should read the book Addicted to Real Estate because not only have I – did I spend years doing nothing but that, I ended up uh, buying a piece of real estate that I bought for uh, $2.1 million that had a rent roll of $42,000 a month, and I did it with $10,000 in the bank. And it's an amazing story that you can read about in my book Addicted to Real Estate that you could get on my website, addictedrealestate.com, or you can get it on Amazon. I mean, how, about, how about speculation? That's another worst way that I would say is, is speculating in real estate and not buying it for, for its income and current income. Um, but people, there's they buy real estate. I mean, years ago, people were trying to get me to buy property at the Jersey Shore. And at the Jersey Shore, the only gameplay was the hope that it would go up because it wasn't cash flowing for sure. It was definitely negative cash flow. And people said, well, don't worry about the negative cash flow because these properties go up in value like crazy. And I, I'm so thankful that I didn't bite that hook. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I haven't even thought about speculating for a while because I don't see as much of it today as I used to. I'll tell you when it'll come back. It'll come back when the market gets hot again. It was, I believe it was Mark Twain who said, if you find yourself in agreement with the public, it may be time to reconsider your position. Um yeah, look at look what everybody else is doing and don't do that, right? Yeah, usually the opposite of what the public is doing is usually the best thing. And and back at the height of the uh, real estate market, uh, my wife in particular, she had a friend that she worked with who was uh, was a nurse. My wife was a nurse at the time. She's now been in the real estate business full time since uh, 2007. But back at like I guess it was around 2004, 2005, she says I got a friend who's doing some real estate investing, and she wanted to bounce some ideas off of you. So I went to my wife's work, and uh, I met her friend, and her friend was buying four New Jersey condos down the shore uh, pre-construction, waiting for them to be built so she could resell them. And I adamantly said, do not do this. I hated her plan. I rejected her ideas completely, and I left. And uh, later on, I got an earful when the wife got home. She was pretty mad at me for uh, shooting her friend's ideas, not only in the foot, but everywhere I could. I hated the plan. It was a totally terrible plan. And uh, I even remember that uh, my wife may not have been speaking to me for a few days about that. And uh, a couple of years later, I heard she got her clock cleaned and uh, I was going to say so she, I told she went her, against your advice. She did it anyway. Yes, she did. She bought four of these units. Well, why did she ask you for your advice? If yeah. she wanted to ask the expert and you gave yeah. her the <laughs> It's one thing to ask for advice. It's another thing to be smart enough to follow it. Yeah. And look, you know, hey, man, uh, I meet lots of people who give me advice. I've, I've made up my own mind in most cases. It's not always so obvious to tell who's giving you the, the greatest advice and who isn't. So uh, to, her, to her credit, I mean, look, I can understand – Greed gets in the way at the top of the market. Well, there's also a lot of naysayers, too, and she could have just been looking at you as a, as a naysayer. And, and there's plenty of times where we tell people don't pay attention to other people that say you can't do this, it's not going to work. But in this particular case, I think there was compelling evidence to know that this is just purely speculation and there was no fundamental investing principles behind buying and hoping. Well, if you guys remember the real estate, uh, I mean the uh, stock market crash in the summer of 2000, 
where the NASDAQ, you know, took a major hit. I mean, back in, in the summer of 2000, there was this old story about, uh, I forget the man's name, in 1929, before the, the great crash of the stock market, there was a, a very successful uh, stock investor who was getting his shoes shined. And the shoe shine boy was giving him stock tips, not knowing who he was. And supposedly, as the story goes, he goes back to his office and he decides to unload, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of stocks. And he says, the day shoeshine boys are giving out stock tips is the day to get out of the market. Okay? And, and that story has always stuck uh, in my mind. I, I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember the investor's name. But the story has always stuck in my mind and it relates perfectly to the story about my wife's friend, which was I was the expert at the time. I tried to tell her not to do that. But maybe what I should have been doing is I should have went home and dumped some real estate thinking the day that nurses are buying four houses at a time uh, and, and, and speculating that they're going to make half a million dollars off of it, it's time to get the heck out of the market. You should have shorted her deals. Yeah, really. <laughs> Give me a short on your, on well, your deals. Well, speaking of shorting deals, I was watching the movie The Big Short over the weekend. I, uh, I rented it on uh, Fios, and I saw it in the movie theater, and I watched it two more times. So I've watched it three times now. That's a great movie. It is a tremendous movie, and it's really made me focus on the next bubble. And I can tell you this, my friends. I don't know when the next bubble is going to be. Let's just guess and say that it's probably going to be somewhere around 2025. I can tell you this. I'm going to be ready for it. I'm going to be ready for it before anybody, just like the character in the movie was his name. Uh, Michael. Michael Burry. Burry, B-U-R-R-Y, Dr. Michael Burry. He was ready for it before anybody. And, you know, if you read my book, Addicted to Real Estate, I talk a lot about cycles. I talk a lot about recognizing. I didn't recognize that a crash was coming, but I definitely recognized that there was a problem on Labor Day weekend in the summer of 2005. Labor Day weekend in the real estate business is definitely some kind of moment where a shift happens. Even in a normal year, let's talk about it, even in a normal year, families are out looking to buy properties and trying to get their families into a new property before the new school year starts, okay? So even in a good year of real estate, when, when real estate acquisitions are going up, you tend to see a drop after Labor Day. And Labor Day comes around and these people haven't found a house. A lot of them are like, they just give up and they say, you know what, we're going to stay here or, or we're going to slow down our look or we're going to try another approach. Plus, not to mention the fact that they are totally uh, overcome with everything required to get their children ready for school. So their mental status shifts. So what happens on Labor Day weekend is everything shifts even in a good year. But when it's a bad year, Things go to drop dead silence on Labor Day weekend. So when you start to sense, when you come back from partying down the shore on Labor Day weekend, if you're in the real estate business, pay a little attention to the local market, and it's going to tell you something on Labor Day weekend. I don't go to the shore anymore. You know, now that we have the places in Siesta Key, you know, somebody's got to go down and make sure that the paint's not peeling and all that stuff. So how do I find out about the Siesta yeah. Key properties? Where'd you find out about them? GoSiesta.com, of course. Check them out. So, guys, stay tuned. We're uh, we're going to be right back with our main topic of the day. I'm sorry, our how to play Monopoly in real life topic. We love addicted to real estate. We're addicted to it, and you will be too when you hear this segment. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. 
and I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. When it comes to your mortgage needs, you can trust Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. With a deep commitment to the city of Philadelphia and the surrounding communities, Thomas has the mortgage industry experience and knowledge that can help you finance the home of your dreams. Today's market is offering incredible mortgage rates, so don't miss out on your chance to purchase or refinance your home. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to get started. For all your home loan needs, call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-76. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back. Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We're going to talk about how to play Monopoly in real life. Before we talk about Monopoly in real life, let's just talk about Monopoly. Okay. I was playing Monopoly last weekend, and uh, actually my my wife had asked me to go play Yahtzee and go find the Yahtzee game. We played Yahtzee, and I, and I go to my basement, and not only did I find one Monopoly board game, I found three Monopoly board games. <laughs> you know, like Star Wars Monopoly and regular Monopoly, and we also had a electronic... Banking monopoly. Have you ever seen that? No. Where so everybody you, has a debit card rather than they are. Their debit, cash out. Yeah. It, it literally is debit cards. You, you've seen it? Yeah. So they're debit cards and this little like calculator and you slide the thing in and it senses which player number card you are and um, you you deduct and it's in millions now. So you buy when you pass go you collect two million dollars. <laughs> so the stakes are up. The other thing that was different it was it was four houses equals one hotel. It used to be three, right? Wasn't it three houses equals one hotel? So I guess housing, on that board game, housing uh, dropped in value compared to hotels. <laughs> you mm. now need four houses to do a hotel. No, I I think it's always been four. Four houses? Yeah. I thought it was three houses, one hotel. No, four greenhouses. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Because four used to fit right across. Yeah. Right, okay. right. 
So this was weird because there was no, you know, there was no counting of dollars, which I guess, you know, welcome to the modern era of plastic versus paper, right? Yeah, why, so. why sneak in a little bit of uh, financial education when we're playing Monopoly with our kids? They can just learn to use uh, plastic credit cards and not see the cash going in and out of their wallet, you know? I don't know. It doesn't seem like a great approach, but. I always said it. I always said it should be where your debit card gets thinner and thinner as you get less money in your bank right. accounts, and it's like paper thin if you're low, and real thick if you're. No, I don't know how they would do that. They have some of these where where they have an electronic, uh, the debit card has like an electronic uh, display on it, which tells you how much money is in your bank account. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I'll tell you, in in my family, uh, my mother was the business oriented person, and. My mom used to always play Monopoly with us, and she figured it was a good way to get us thinking about money, and it was. And we played it, like, you know, thousands and thousands of times when I was a kid. And uh, there's even a picture of uh, me playing Monopoly when I was a kid in my new book. Oops, I'm mentioning it again. I'm, my, my, my blood pressure's already going up. That, that, that My book's not finished yet. Remind me to call Gus on the way back from the studio. Okay, so one of the first things that I did when I was a kid was the rules that are set up for the traditional game of Monopoly are a little bit too slow. Like, for example, why do you have to have four houses on a piece of property before you can build the hotel? That rule does not apply to reality. So I was able to convince my family members to scrap that rule. Okay. Well, in fact, it's actually worse because you're destroying capital in order to build something else. So you're going to build the houses just to tear them down? That's yeah, crazy. it actually That's has crazy. you build four houses and then knock them all down for a hotel. Well, you know, I mean, it would make more sense that there'd be some existing screwed-up houses on those properties doesn't, already. Doesn't Monopoly know zoning? Come on. Okay. How about this rule? This was always a problem for me, all right? I When it was my turn, I would trade with my brother a lot. My brother was always a sucker. I mean a partner in one of my trades. And... My brother was always willing to trade things, okay? And it occurred to me that why do I have to wait for it to be my turn? While it was someone else's turn, I should be able to trade. So the, the, the way to say that, you're allowed to do that. Okay, well, I think, yeah, you're well, okay, maybe that was a self-imposed rule by my mother. She said, it's my turn, let me think. And I'd say, no, uh, I'm still doing business, regardless of the fact that it's your turn, I'm making deals. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that we did. It became like uh, um, uh, try to imagine the, the energy of, uh, of uh, stock traders on the floor. We're all screaming and yelling at each other at the same time trying to do deals. My philosophy was to buy every single thing I landed on, every single thing. That was my philosophy. And, uh, you know, I try to almost do that in my real life today. I, I do try to buy a lot of properties that I come along. But um, wasn't it a rule that you had to like go around the board once before you can buy something? Yeah, too? we ditched that rule. That's too. horrible. Okay. Bad rule. Yeah. And why can't you buy a property when you're in jail? That's baloney. You should still be allowed <laughs> to buy properties when you're in jail. What the, What does you being in jail have to do with anything? It's that, that just happens to be where you're located at, at the moment. So <clears throat> there's no excuse for that rule. I'm at my satellite office. <laughs> <clears throat> well. You know, it can be a game that teaches your kids a lot of important lessons, and, and it definitely it definitely resonated with me and was in my mind my whole life that real estate is is something that's worth being involved in. I mean... You know that, what the original game was called before it was called Monopoly? No, I don't. It was called the Landlord Game. Really? Yeah, it was called the Landlord Game. Look it up on Wikipedia. It's pretty neat. It yeah. actually was... Um, it was supposed to be like a jab towards capitalism, really. It was supposed to be... Look at these, you know... Rich capital guys are just out to bankrupt everybody else. And so um, it's interesting how the game changed, and you can read, you know, I saw it on Wikipedia. I think I watched a YouTube video on it. It was pretty neat. Hmm. But anyway, no buzzkill there. Let's talk about Monopoly in real life. Well, I mean, when, I, when people ask me what I do for a living, I tell them, you know, I play Monopoly for a living. That's what I tell them because that's basically what I feel. Like they're always saying, well, what are you? Are you a, they're trying to put me in a box. Are you a flipper? Are you a, a wholesale guy? Or you a buy and hold guy, and I'm well. Sure, I mean, I'm all of those things. I'm all of those things, and uh, and why do I have to define myself as being just one of them? The the deal that we find defines itself as the highest and best use for that particular deal is what we're going to do with it. Uh, Jeremy and I looked at a house this week. The highest and best use for it is really a flip. And we don't necessarily – maybe we're – at the moment, we're flush with cash, and we don't need any more cash right now. But this deal 
defines itself as a flip. It's the highest and best use for it, so that's what we're going to do with it. Steve was in the office the other day. We were, um, a guy had called up. I think we were just getting in the car, and he was on speakerphone in the car, and, and he said he had a, a house in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and it was $800,000 house. Would you guys buy something like this? Well, it was in decent shape. I mean, surely it's not going to be a rental property. So like you were saying, I mean, $800,000 house – doesn't single family home doesn't lend itself to be a rental. So in that particular case, you're not a landlord, <laughs> and, and the house dictates that, not not your strategy. So, yep. What what about um you know one of the things that we did down in Florida was we bought it, we were kind of buying up a, a street and parceling pieces together. We also looked at you know even where our office is in Hapro. Now we own three different address uh, four different addresses right along the same corner. So kind of like Monopoly, if you if you can tie up a, a, a big corner. Maybe somebody will, you know, that'll be more valuable. Maybe a, a large chain will come in and buy you up. I mean, that's kind of a monopoly uh, oh, me- sure. mentality there. Let's talk about it. I mean, Jeremy and I own a, a couple of properties at the corner of Byberry and York, and we're, it's where one of our real estate agencies is, and we have an I Buy Houses store there, and we're very, very happy with that location. And we don't necessarily want to sell it. However, well, it's for sale. Why would it be for sale? I'll tell you why. Because, quote, Everything I have is always for sale all the time, unquote. All right? I think that's a philosophy that you should have. If you own a valuable piece of property, there's always a number that you'll sell it for. So we put the corner up for sale for a million dollars. And, you know, if you're uh, thinking about buying a Starbucks franchise... You're it's a great for, spot. <laughs> you're looking for a good location in Ampro? Maybe you should give us a call at 267-988-8000. Because we just might sell you that piece of real estate. So we've only got about two minutes left, guys. Anything else you want to say about Monopoly before we get into our closing statements? Steve, want to share anything? Uh, real, life, real life Monopoly, or are we talking um, Game Board Monopoly here? Well, I, to me, I view this, them both to be the same, really. One's practice for real life. Or, or we actually buy houses in real life so that we get better at the board game. <laughs> <laughs> With the hopes of getting that hotel put up one day, I guess. Um, no, I mean, I really have nothing else to, to add. I'm just trying to uh, develop my own monopoly strategy behind the scenes here. As you guys are talking about, I'm getting all amped up to uh, start playing myself a little bit more aggressively. So yeah, we got to help you build up your your collection of properties. That's what we got to focus on right now. If you want to, guys, want to learn how to do more of this, certainly tune into this show every Thursday at three o'clock, and also come to our meetings. Sign up at addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address, and you'll get invites to our meetings where you can come and, and, and see us in person and talk to us and ask us questions and hang with us and uh, you know eat some chow together and talk talk real estate. We love talking about it. We love this business. Yeah, and if, uh, if you guys are interested in being a sponsor on this show or even a guest, if you're in a real estate-related business and you want to be a guest on our show, give me a call at 267-988-2000. And don't forget to uh, to check out our website at addictedtorealestate.com to figure out how you can get your real estate license for free. Good point. Good point. Get your real estate license for free at Addicted to Real Estate. I'm Phil Falcone, and thanks for listening to our show today. <laughs>